Hey everybody, welcome to Angel Mabel. Let's use my old name. Conversation with friends. <laughs> Let me just get everybody to hit refresh. And when you have sound. Oops, I can't type and talk at the same time. I'm kind of, oops, they go, they're all refreshing. Ding a time. And I'm going to be very professional tonight. I'm going to try and read uh, Rich's bio. It's not that long, but usually I end up tripping over things. So we'll, we'll see. Oh, <laughs> But you didn't make it that long, and I had a couple of, I, I, I just switched a couple of things around, not that much. Did you, did you, Eric is typing. Eric, did you have sound? Oh, Miss Larry, we're getting more people. Yay. Okay, good. Tammy hears me. Good. We have one person with sound. All right, everybody. For those of you who don't have sound, keep hitting refresh. Not that you can hear me. And yes, oh my God, I'm going to be professional. Yes, see, I heard that one. All right. So this evening, ladies and gentlemen, my guest is none other than Rich, the voice Valdez. Now, he's got a voice, what I said on my Facebook Live, that makes you feel comfortable. And you know he's not handing you a line of BS. His voice just does that to you. It gives you confidence in what he's saying. He is co-founder of Wayward Soul Productions co-founder of Paranormal Consulting Activity, agency, sorry, two things at one time, doesn't work with this cat, right? Um, the Paranormal Consulting Agency is a team that has been established since 2005. Its lead investigator, he's a little strange dude, Rich Valdez, and his team uh, are mentioned in books like Ghost Hunters of the South and State by State under the state of Louisiana. Rich Valdez is also the co-director for Bishop James Long's team of paranormal clergy and one of the three demonologists recognized by the United States Old Catholic Church. His team also represents paranormal clergy for the state of Florida. Rich is also a proud member of John Zaffis. I'm hoping I'm getting that name right. John Zaffis' team, P-R-S-N-E, and his team is the only he is and his team is the only team to represent P R S N E for the whole state of Florida, which also hosts a popular radio radio show competition, Greetings from Beyond Radio, and his team has been featured on public cable television show television show A Hunting for Season Nine that Murray Buried Secret. Yay, I did it without too much tripping. <laughs> <laughs> so, first off, thank you very much, Rich, for, um, ex first off, accepting my friend request on Facebook, because I hear you're very picky about who you accept, and you accepted me, so it's not that bad. Uh, but most importantly, thank you for agreeing to be on the show. Well, thank you for having me on your show. I much appreciate it. So, tell, for, for other than what I just read to everybody, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. Well, uh... <clears throat> Let's see, I've been in the paranormal field uh, for well over 30 years. Um, uh, officially, I, I actually started investigating on my own. I'd go to haunted locations with a tape recorder, Polaroid camera. Uh, this was long before EMS were being uh, theorized that they could be used to uh, find uh, spirits or spirit activity, that theory uh, was eh, loosely out there but not really being used at the time. Uh, I'd, I'd go to places like the Biltmore Hotel, which around that time was closed. Uh, yes, I went into uh, private property that was closed and I investigated. But then again, uh, they'd have to arrest just about everyone else that was there. The homeless were there, too. So I'd go to the 13th floor, which is notorious uh, for for its hauntings and a few other rooms in that hotel. I've been to uh, Coral Castle. I've uh, consulted on many cases uh, throughout the years, uh, both paranormal and demonic. Um, I've also... I was trained, formally trained, 
uh, first by my pastor, Frank Marzillo, may he rest in peace, um, at the early age of 19 going on 20, and then around the time I was about to turn 22, he unfortunately passed away. So my uh, studies stopped there. And, um, and, you know, life pretty much takes over. You get married, you have kids, and uh, life goes on, and you have a career. But my passion is still remained with the paranormal and anything that had to do with demonology, which I call a calling. And um, uh, the time was right, 2003. Uh, I decided to join a uh, paranormal team that actually was already established. Uh, they had actually started um, eight months before I joined um, in Florida. They were called Florida, uh, South Florida Ghost Team. Um, it was started and founded by Sean Jones, and she was uh, very well-versed in the paranormal field. Um, I, I stayed with them for a few years, and around April 2015, I decided to start my own team with two other members that were with me uh, in South Florida Ghost Team. Uh, that time, we were National Paranormal Society, but around 2009, we changed our name to Paranormal Consulting Agency, and um, that's when things really started taking off for us. Uh, John Zappis was the first one to reach out to me, and uh, he knew of my uh, accomplishments and accolades. Uh, he asked my team and I to take on a demonic case uh, in Florida. We did. Uh, we helped as much as we could. <clears throat> Eventually, we had to drop the case because the client wanted, I know this sounds very strange, uh, the demon back. Um, we didn't get rid of the demon. We called the clergy in. Uh, they got rid of the demon, but her obsession with this demon pretty much invited it back into her life. Um, and then around 2010, Bishop Long reached out to me, and uh, he said that he had been praying for about two weeks. I'll never forget that day. Uh, he said, um, I've been praying for two weeks for an answer. Uh, I feel that you are the man to head uh, the paranormal clergy, which she had already established long before I came along, uh, as one of two administrators along with Cat Lang. And um, I started off as an administrator, and I also started my training once again with him. Uh, for five years, uh, I trained with him. He, he mentored me. And before I knew it, I had my certification uh, I was recognized by the United States Old Catholic Church, which was, and still is to this day, a great honor. And um, uh, 2017, uh, I met Jen. Uh, we got um, uh, Wayward Souls promotions started um, uh, with the sole purpose of promoting other teams, models, uh, individuals in the paranormal field, events, conventions, you name it. And uh, we've grown ever since. We've just been little by little growing. And we like the fact that we're still involved in the paranormal and we still uh, have time to promote other people uh, that, in my opinion and hers, deserve it. And uh, needless to say, here we are today talking. So, hi. <laughs> How's everyone? <laughs> Uh, just a quick one, uh, guest in the chat room, unless you have a name, you can't type in. So if you can sign in with Facebook, that would really be great. I saw you, somebody trying to type something. Um, yeah, there's a couple of questions that I have, and uh, uh, Amanda Kay uh, also asked the exact same question I was thinking was, why would somebody want to keep a demon uh, in this, where? This is a unique case. <clears throat> um, so you've never caught, caught somebody before, since then who's wanted to, to keep the I can understand keeping spirits if they're non uh, non demonistic, okay? Like you know, if they're children, they want to stay, they don't want to cross over, you know, for whatever reason or different people. But a demon to me, that would be somebody that you would want to get. Say yeah, thanks, but no thanks. I I agree one hundred percent. This individual without ever dropping a name because that's that's just the way I am and, and I respect everyone's privacy. But uh, 
this person started off um, with what I would call an obsession with the paranormal. Um, for about three and a half years, this um, this woman uh, conducted EVPs in her own home, and um, uh, I'm not sure if, if uh, I can uh, use curse words on, on your show, so I will say this. The old saying, never defecate where you eat. I guess that's the official word I can repeat. The, the nice word I can use uh, uh -huh. is what she was doing. Um, and uh, what she ended up doing was uh, attempting spirit communication in her home. By doing that, she opened up a doorway uh, yeah. by which um, this demonic entity and presence was able to come through. As a result, um, anyone that's ever studied demonology uh, or my, like myself, I've studied it for so many years, um, demons never really come across at first saying, I'm a demon and I'm here to destroy your life. <laughs> uh, they usually come across as, as very, <clears throat> how should I put it, um, uh, mm -hmm. non-threatening, yeah. non-threatening spirits. Um, I, I usually am very skeptical when a person says that there's a spirit of a child or a spirit of an elderly person <clears throat> in their home trying to communicate with them, and it looks like someone they know or uh, a child, which is non-threatening. That's usually how they gain access. And this is how this one started coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, before you knew it, she started communicating back and forth. She'd ask a question, she'd uh, rewind, and she'd get a response. Little by little, things started getting a little bit messier and, and uh, worse. Uh, scratch marks started appearing on her. They started appearing on, on her child. She was being attacked. Um, she was talking in her sleep. Actually, she wasn't talking in her sleep. This entity, this demon, was talking through her. She was even recording herself sleeping. Um, it had become an obsession. Okay. Um, so by the time we got there, um, she was uh, she was already in the in between stage of oppression and possession. There's okay. three stages. Uh, there's infestation, oppression, which leads to possession. And um, we knew there was something up when. Uh, my team and I walk in and we're talking to her and every time she talks, there's a growling voice behind her like surround sound, uh, almost as if it was manipulating her to tell us what was to be said next. This was very, very strange and I can't really mm -hmm. explain it to you, but imagine right now you're talking and you have surround sound around you and there's a growl and it's it, it kind of precedes you and and next thing you know you're you're talking normal but that growl is there um we were there for three days two nights um a lot of strange things happened we called the clergy in and they took care of it uh we also had um angel who's uh, uh the medium that we work with he helped trap uh this this entity as well um, in a in a doll, uh, he threw it into uh, the lake, which was approximately about a half a block away from the home. Okay. And um, this woman uh, gave over 525 EVPs that she had collected over three and a half years to us. Wow. She's even on video stating, I don't want these anymore. You can have them. This is upon request from John Zappas. This was long before we started working with Bishop Long. Um, and she, you know, went ahead and, and agreed to it. Uh, we have her on video giving us two boxes full of video and audio, you name it. And said, take it, burn it, I don't care what you want to do with it, I don't want it anymore. She even got rid of the page that she had dedicated to the experiences that she was having with this thing. Mind you, this is before Facebook, um, and this is around uh, MySpace times. Okay. And uh, if anyone remembers MySpace, 
but yes, my before Facebook came along, there was a MySpace, and um, about three days later, I, I start getting phone calls, and I specifically told her, um, if we get evidence, uh, we're not even going to tell you. Don't even bother asking because we're not going to share it with you. You've had this thing removed. Move on with your life. And of course, you know, I I I'd talk to her here and there, and I'd give her words of encouragement. But mm-hmm. she was so obsessive. And it's almost as if a piece of her had gone missing. Usually when a person has been possessed for so long, uh, they lose their identity, mm-hmm. or part of their identity. Mm-hmm. And it's like losing a limb. And what ends up happening is that uh, she got to the point where she got very, very uh, belligerent with me, with my team, with John Zaffis. She left approximately eight messages on John Zaffis's um, answering machine. This is John Zaffis we're talking about, the godfather of the paranormal. This is someone that you just don't talk to this way, and I can't go into the words that she chose to use and leave on there. And I, uh, it was rude. Let's just say uh, it's a family funny show. I'm not going to use the words. And I had to call her back, and I told her, as of now, you're cut off. We're done. Uh, because you have continued to obsess over this, and I have tried to walk you through this and you refused to listen. She took it one step further, and you're going to find this to be very, very interesting, Mama D. Um, she decided, I'm going to have a tattoo of the demon that was removed. Huh? As a, placed as a mural on her back. And that's um, exactly what she did. And I'm not kidding you. She sent me pictures. I'm like, I really don't need to see this. And these are the dangers of individuals that really get involved um, with experimenting in their own home. Or they end up somehow, some way, getting some kind of demonic entity attached or possessed, mm-hmm. uh, possessing their, their, their body. So yes, this is why she wanted it back. Because she had a void she had, it's like losing a limb. She wanted it back, and she just didn't know how to fill that void again. Even though we gave her instructions, she didn't follow them. Yeah, but that's the thing she didn't follow. It's it's like you, you, you hear about people who lose limbs who have that phantom pain, but hers was phantom. It was still, it was emotional. It was physical for her. There was that part of her that was gone, because like you said, she had been connected with this thing for so long. That it, losing it is like it's it's worse than losing a child because it's not phys, it's not a physical thing but it is a physical thing. So yeah, I I, I feel bad for her, um, but like uh, Amanda in the chat room says, her poor children. You said it affected her children as well. It affected her uh, youngest more than it did the oldest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe her youngest was at that time five or four years old. Um, one of the best EVPs we ever captured was in that case, and still to this day, I've used it in many of the speaking engagements that I've been asked to appear in, and uh, people are amazed. I've had specialists go through these uh, through this one EVP, and they're saying, are you sure there wasn't a child there? Mind you, um, I asked her to please have her husband and her two children stay in a hotel. And she was more than willing to do so because she didn't want them anywhere near this situation, Mm -hmm. or so she claimed. But little did I know, um, you know, the demon that was with her, this is what we call a a perfect possession um, because this this later on came back and it took over. This is no longer her. Now it's this demon. If you ever, if anyone were to ever talk to her, and I will never divulge the name or location, uh, you're not talking to the woman, you're talking to the demon, or demons plural. And uh, this EVP that we captured, Angel, uh, which is a very talented medium, was walking around, he had a recorder in one hand, and in the other hand he had his two fingers out, and I noticed this. And he said, I have a child, and he's walking around with me, he's holding my two fingers right now. Mm-hmm. And he seems to be very, very scared. 
Now, I don't think Angel was aware that this child could very, very possibly be something demonic. And as he's walking around, he's like, it's okay, it's okay. And you hear Angel saying that, and then you hear, clear as day, help me, in the voice of a little boy. Okay. And it's a class A EVP. I've had specialists run through it. They run it through all their special um, programs, and they can't explain it away because there's literally no no uh, indication that there's a voice there. You can clearly see the line spiking when Angel talks, but when you hear, help me, clear as day, and there's no line to indicate it, mm-hmm. and they can't even find out and or disprove it as possibly... Uh, some kind of mimicry or, or, or some, some kind of uh, uh, program that put that voice in there, they don't know what to say. So mm-hmm. basically it is what it is. It's the voice. It's not of a little boy. I'm convinced to this day that it was that demon just portraying itself to be a little boy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Eric Bullion in the chat room uh, says, wow, a perfect position. It's been a long time since he heard that thing. And that's the scariest of scary. Mm-hmm. And Amanda, yeah, I'm breaks for that family as well. But have you, since then, you've had no connection with this woman. So, you, do you know how she's doing? I know she wrote a book. Uh, I'm not even going to give the the book. Yeah. The time, the energy. Um, she trashed uh, John in that book. She trashed our team in that book. But mind you. Um, I'm taking instructions from John Zaffis, who, in my opinion, is one of the leading demonologists in the world today. Uh, he has uh, the upbringing and the training from Ed Warren, his uncle, and Lorraine Warren, who are very well known within the paranormal field. Do you honestly think that I am going to go against John Zaffis' word? Hell no. Uh, no. <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't. All I know is that she's written a book, a uh, very small book. Um, you could read it within 30 minutes. Uh, trying to get her fame, uh, trying to get you know, you know, uh, noticed, uh, mm-hmm. trying to get on shows left and right. She, I know she's contacted every show out there, and they've all turned her down. And, and I think it's a good Anybody kind of hate you attack it, you know, messages me, I'm going to just give you the name and go, is this her? <laughs> and she say, yes, okay. Okay. No, thank you. <laughs> I, have her, I have her number blocked, and ironically, you know what, uh, last year, uh, you know how Facebook tends to send you people you may know and want to be friends with. Uh-huh. And, and her face and name came up, and I was like, Okay, I did not see that. <laughs> no, 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 been there, done that. Not, not in that sense, but I understand the idea, yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. So, like, so I'm guessing that's like the worst of the worst that you've had ever had to deal with so far. No. In your... no. 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 <laughs> it's just, what can be worse? Putting your your family and your children. I, as a mother, my heart is just screaming. How could you put your children through this? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love my husband. He's he's the man that I chose. But my children take precedence over everything. So as a mother, I can't see how she could do that. She had just a tiny bit of her sense still there. That for me, that's that's a line you don't cross. You don't touch my babies. Right. Uh, and I agree 100%. And mm-hmm. mind you, I take every precautionary measure uh, yeah. before going on any case. I don't care if it's uh, presumed to be human, haunting, or inhuman, mm-hmm. demonic. Uh, I, I always take precautionary measures. I pray over my home, myself, my family, my friends. Uh, and I do that before I leave my home. I do that before re- uh, arriving. I, I do that as I leave. Yeah. I've had situations where one actually followed me back, and my dog kept barking at the attic door for a whole week straight until I finally realized I saw my whole family fighting amongst each other, and, you know, we all had short tempers, and, all, and it took me about five days to realize it. I was like, what the hell's going on? Mm-hmm. And uh, 
I, I, I decided, okay, you know what? Wait a minute. This, this, this isn't right. This is not how my family is. I, I started doing the Our Father prayer, the St. Michael prayer, and I, I started burning some frankincense and myrrh that uh, Bishop Long had given to me. And I walked around the house. I did the prayers. And before you knew it, the dog went away from the attic door, went over to the couch, sat down, and went to sleep. My kids stopped bickering, and, uh, you know, everyone was fine. My wife was fine. Everyone was fine. I'm like, what the hell's going on? I, now I understand what's going on. I brought this thing back. Yeah. Well, needless to say, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> uh, that's not the worst thing to say to you. I, I we, have we have a question in the chat room, and something you said also brought up a question in my head that was asked to me to ask to you, so let's do it. Eric Glenn's question, do you think demons are as active at getting their Warped messages over as spirits are of getting their peace and light messages over. Uh, good question. Um, yes, uh, but I think demons do it more so under the radar um, versus the spirit that is in light, uh, human spirit, or or be it a, a sentient being that's much higher. Uh, than uh, a human uh, spirit, uh, they will send you a positive message because if you're receptive to it, you will receive it. Mm -hmm. It depends on the vibration you put out. Uh, a demonic spirit can go for years, and I repeat that, years, before it makes its presence known. But within that time frame, it's also been chipping away, and you just don't know it. Okay. It chips things away. It, it needs to do this and in order for the big bad to come in. And I'm not talking about Satan. I'm not talking mm. about Lucifer. Yeah. Uh, there are other hierarchy demons uh, that have legions uh, that work for them. And those legions are the ones that do the work for them to break down the individual psyche, their spirit, their physical health, everything. Okay. I hope that answers your question, Eric. Okay, the question is asked to me uh, by somebody who, when I said I'm having a demonology on the show, they're like, oh, okay, Dan, I've got a question for you. Um, if you meet somebody, for example, you meet me on the street, would you be able to tell if I had a demon or a negative entity around me? You know, like we're sitting down having a conversation, would you be able to tell? That's a good question, too. Um, I've had, being empathic, and I don't mm -hmm. know if people know uh, what being empathic means. Yes, I uh, people do, but you can explain it so that those who don't understand it go for it. Well, I think being, okay, well, for those that do not understand what em uh, being an empath is, uh, an empath is someone that can sense uh, people's emotions. Um, you can walk into a room, and let's say you're ticked off, you walk into a room, everyone's happy, all of a sudden the mood changes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because you just walked into the room. You just don't sense it. You can also, you know, uh, send that vibration out too. I have met individuals in the past that have made my skin crawl. Uh, they're very far and few between uh, when it comes to a demon, but those are the only ones I think that have had something attached to them uh, or within them. There are the others, which are very negative individuals that come across, oh, very nice, quaint, and let's have a spot of tea and, and you know, talk. But there's something off about them, and you tend to just keep them at, a, at a arm's distance. Uh, and then usually you end up finding out the hard way why you've been keeping them at arm's distance because they're just, uh, I don't want to say they're bad people because I really think everyone has good in them. Mm -hmm. They're just going through a rough patch at that time or maybe they've chosen to just be flat out evil. Yeah. Uh, but yes, I, I think uh, in the, the short time, because, well, it really hasn't been a short time. I've been at this for quite some time. I think I can only say that for people that have an attachment, demonic attachment, 
mm -hmm. or they are possessed. I'd say uh, seven, because it's very rare that you come across something demonic. Okay. Uh, that's the equivalency of winning the lottery four times in one month. Good luck. I just got to go to <laughs> <laughs> We're moving out of the snow country. Uh, okay, so if somebody feels that they are, they, I'm going to see this way, that they've got a dark cloud over their head, okay? Mm -hmm. And every time that they sort of find that, that, that light starts to shine through, excuse me, and then the darkness just closes back in on them. If they think that they are being uh, followed by or attacked by or you know that dark cloud is is getting its its you know grips into you more is there something that you can suggest for them to do if they are not like okay, i was born and i was raised catholic and and baptized and all that fun stuff um but this person does not believe believes they have the basic foundation of catholicism to start with but now they believe in in spiritualism so the idea for them to Say the Our Father, which I could probably do by rote, by the way. Um, you know, do other things. Is there anything that you can say? Okay, no, just to be on the safe side, do you know this? This, you know, like say four things that you can tell us that would help them out. Um, simply put, uh, if you're following a spiritual path, and and let me let me just uh, make this. Clear. Yes, I am of Christian faith, but I am very eclectic, and I also believe that um, other faiths and other ways of being, spiritually speaking, do have their place uh, in this world, and I think it's different strokes for different folks when it comes to that, and I respect accordingly. Um, you, you know the old saying, you are what you eat? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if... You've always been the type of person that tends to always look um, at the negative. Before you look at the positive, uh, what you're going to draw to you, you're going to magnetize to yourself is negativity. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I'm sure you've heard of the victim complex. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are always thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a victim, constantly being victimized. You know, this, I always have bad luck. This happens to me and this happens to me. And, well, if you're always focusing on the bad things that have happened uh, and going back to the past and focusing on them over and over and over again, you're going to keep drawing that to you because that's the frequency that you're putting out. Yeah. So, the toughest thing to do is to rewire how you think, how you process those things that happen in your life, and then overcoming it, that becomes the true challenge. It's kind of like a diet. Um, when you start off, you, you know, you go in front of the mirror and you weigh yourself and, and you go, wow, I've gained that much weight, and you look at yourself and you go, wow, I really have gained weight. Well, you just can't say... I'm going to lose 40 pounds right now. It's not going to work. Mm -hmm. So you have to strategize. You have to create, formulate a plan. I got to go on a diet. I got to stop eating this, drinking that. I got to start exercising. And don't expect your 40 pounds to go away in one day. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much how this works. Uh, the vibration you put out, and the way you've trained yourself to think is what you're going to draw to yourself. Hence why there's so many people out there, and I've noticed that there's a plethora of them on Facebook that are always posting negative, negative posts. You know, like, I can't believe this just happened to me, or I'm so tired of this happening, and, and why can't things change for me? And stop asking. Just do it. Uh, yeah. Stop complaining. And why don't you be thankful for what you have? Um, and it's so simple. But for me, it's simple. For you, it could be simple. For other people like us, it's simple. But for those that are unaware that they are their own worst enemy, mm -hmm. they, are, they don't even realize that they're the ones causing this. Yep. Very hey, true. Why do I keep getting hit by trucks? Well, maybe if you'd, like, get out of the street, when a truck is about to hit you. 
Uh-huh. You will stop getting hit by trucks. Exactly. So, <laughs> but that kind of person is the person that say, okay, I'll get out of the street so I won't get hit by a truck. And then, but wait a minute, if I get on the sidewalk, I just might get hit by a bicycle or someone riding a skateboard. You know, if that's the way you're going to be, then it's a choice. Yes. Which is going to hurt less, the skateboard or the truck? You know, <laughs> give me a skateboard any day. Uh, one of the things you said that sort of reminded me, um, you said if somebody's – there's people out there always posting negative stuff on Facebook. Um, up here, there's a television reporter, and um, as you know I do my Facebook Lives in the morning, and I called him out on my Facebook Live, and I said, any because as I was leaving the house that day, he the last thing I heard him say was, um, I am so tired of all this positive brouhaha all over Instagram. And it was because there was a lady in the in the school cafeteria – who was writing positive and, and encouraging messages to the kids on bananas. You write on a banana and the kids feel it, it's not a problem. You know? But he was just, so I called him out and I said, anybody who thinks that they have too many positive, encouraging messages on Instagram, you're following the wrong people. And I put his name out there and I said, y'all, just follow this man. Put out all kinds of encouraging and positive messages. And if you have a problem with it, tell him, come see Mama D. And he is from Tibet. <laughs> I'm waiting for him to come into my store one day, and, and I promise I'd smack him upside the back of the head. <laughs> Which I'm, and I'll get it on videotape, too. Uh, question in the chat room from Amanda K. Is it harder to get rid of the negative entity if your other half is a non-believer? Oh, I like that one. That's a good question. Um, no. Uh, it, it can be, uh, but it does – It's a lot more um, helpful if your significant other is on board and helping, but it's not impossible to get rid of the negative energy um, or entity that may be attached to you. Uh, it's a matter of you changing, kind of like what we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, your perception on life, if you, if you have the perception uh, of I'm always the victim or I am the victim, uh, those type of entities feed off of that type of energy. Um, I, I, I've spoken to so many colleagues in the field, and one of my favorite, and, and I consider him a friend, uh, I was a field reporter for his show uh, for many years. His name is Paul Eno. Um, <clears throat> he likened to these entities, uh, or what we commonly refer to as demonic entities, as uh, leeches, mm-hmm. uh, they, they they basically uh, feed off of you. But what they need to feed off of you is the negativity. Yeah. They they need to feed off the fear. And once you remove the fear, once you remove the negativity or the way you perceive life, and you infuse your life with positive uh, anything, be it music, be it shows. Be it means, um, how about some people that are positive? Uh, that helps immensely. Uh, mm-hmm. Certain habits. If you like taking a walk, uh, long walks in the park because it's pleasing to you, do it. If you like smelling the roses as you go along, do it. If you have a hobby that makes you happy because once you're done with that hobby, you like seeing what you've accomplished, do it. Um, only when you start insisting on sticking to the negativity, and, and this is the generic way of doing things, okay? Uh, this is without having to call in clergy. This is without having to uh, go through the formalities and red tape that usually involve having to get clergy involved and all that. Start changing the way you perceive life. And before you know it, you're going to start seeing changes take place in your life, positive changes. And these types of entities can't stand that. They'll yeah. fall off of you because there's nothing else to feed off of. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you're doing good. Uh, Eric Glynn in the chat room says, not every bump in the night is spirit. Not every bump in the road of life is a possession. Sometimes you have to shake your own attitude and not wait for the higher force to do it for you. 
Remember, positivity breeds positivity. So, yeah. Amen. Amen to that one. I agree. Uh, okay. So, this this woman was not your first, well, may have been your first most difficult case, but no. we're going to, she was, uh, but I want to know what your most fun case was. <clears throat> Yeah, that was one that you think about and, and makes you, okay, for me it would be giggle, but I can't picture you giggling, but you know what I mean. Hey, well, um, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this was way before Bishop uh, Long, um, uh, way before John Zaffis. I was actually uh, working for my church at the time, and uh, I had been called in to uh, do my my job uh, mm-hmm. as a demonologist. And mind you, I, had a, I, I was the only one in that church that had some type of formal training. And uh, they asked me to go and check and see if there was any demonic activity. I would have to say this happened around 1998. And um, I drove... Uh, for about four hours. It was, a, it was a good four-hour drive from where I lived. But before I, I, I jump ahead of myself, I digress. Uh, let me let me also state that I spoke to the husband mm-hmm. of uh, this individual that was possessed. And I, I can guarantee you this person was possessed. And uh, I said, do me a favor. Uh, just step outside. And uh, he stepped outside. Um this was back in the day uh, I was using my home phone. Uh, he was using his portable home phone. And I said, have you mentioned my name in front of your wife at all? And he's like, no, I haven't actually. Why? Uh, should I? And I said, no. Um, I, I want you to refer to me as Frank Black. Okay? If, if anything, if she asks who are you talking to, you say Frank. His name is Frank Black. And uh, and he said, why? It's a test. It's mm-hmm. part of the test. And he said, okay, no problem. It's a little fib, but it's one that must be used, unfortunately, in this line of work. Mm-hmm. So um, from that point forward, I was Frank Black. Um, she never asked. Ironically, I later on found out she never asked who he was speaking to. Uh, he actually volunteered information to her and said, well, uh, I was talking to this gentleman, never mentioned my name, and he'll be coming up uh, this weekend, and he's just going to be interviewing me for a little bit. <coughs> Long story short, I show up that weekend, uh, mind you, with a mentality of I'm Frank Black. And for those of you that don't know who Frank Black is, I'm a big fan of the show Millennium. Um, I love Millennium. I've always loved Millennium, always will and I wish they'd make a movie of it. But that's a different story for a different time. Um, And I showed up, and I remember, this is almost like a scene out of The Exorcist, kind of, sort of, maybe, except I'm not an exorcist, I'm just a demonologist. I get out of my car, I had my briefcase with me, and I remember looking up in the upstairs window to what later on I found out to be the bedroom. And the woman in question was sitting by the window looking down at me. Let's just say I got those chills that I was talking about when I was asked that question, have you ever known, if you've ever come across an individual that's demonically possessed? Well, just looking at her, I knew there was something off. Okay. Because whatever was with her was looking right through me. Mm. I went, I knocked on the front door, the husband opened the door, great, I introduced myself and he said, She's upstairs. She's waiting for you. I'm like, I don't like the sound of that, but okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I went ahead, and he led me upstairs, opened the door, and he he said, honey, this is Frank Black. Uh, he's here to do a few interviews and testings for you, and uh, you want me to stay here, or do you want me to leave? And I said, no, you can, you can leave, just leave the door open. And there's a reason for that. Uh, yeah. Because... You know, if there's if something really goes awry, you know, I want to be I want to make sure that he can hear yeah. something's gone wrong. 
So uh, she was sitting at a table with two chairs that was actually by the window that she was uh, viewing me from. And uh, I sat down. Um, I said, well, it's a pleasure to meet you. I never touched her. Uh, that's one of the rules. Yeah. Uh, I, I said, I was going to introduce myself, as your husband said, my name is. And she said, we know who you are, Mr. Valdez. Ooh. And I was like, now, you've heard the term poker face, right? Uh-huh. That's around the time my poker face came on. And I had to pretend that that did not rattle me to my core. Uh, that being said, I was like, I just kept taking everything out of my briefcase. And I said, excuse me, did you refer to me as someone else? And she just smirked at me. Or should I say the demon or demons smirked at me? Mm -hmm. uh, needless to say, I, I started conducting... Um, all of my testings, one of which uh, happens to involve uh, the Zener test. Um, the Zener test, for those of you that are not aware of it, and those of you that have seen Ghostbusters, uh, one of the very first scenes, you see Bill Murray's character, and he's holding up cards, and he's testing this young lady and this, this young guy, their psychic abilities, to see if they know what he's holding behind that card. Is it a star? Is it a circle? Is it whatever? Yeah. So, let's say out of 20 cards, um, whatever's with her got approximately 15 of them right. <clears throat> um, that is one of the tests that I have to conduct. Uh, I won't go into too much detail as to all the, all the other testings, uh, but let's say that uh, the other tests she failed as well, which is a bad thing. Um, and after I was done, you know, with the testing, uh, I'll never forget, you know, what transpired between the two of us. I, I, I told her, well, thank you so much for your time, and I hope you start feeling better. And mind you, I'm taking notes throughout the, my testing and whatnot. And as I get up and I finish packing all of my briefcase up, she says, I'm sure we'll be seeing each other again, Rich. And I was like, I didn't even turn back to look at her. Mm -hmm. I just kept walking. I shook her husband's hand. And I said, I will be in contact with you soon. Got into my car, got two blocks past the house, and I went, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. I got to the hotel. I called my pastor and I said, you better get a young and old priest over there real quick because this girl's definitely possessed. All right? Just just for sure. You don't even need a report from me. He's like, well, why? What happened? And I told him what happened. Even halfway through, he said, yeah, we'll, we'll set something up. Uh, but we first have to do a psychological evaluation. And I said, that's fine. Do the psyche dial. I don't care. But I'm telling you, that was not her. That was it, them, whatever you want to call it, and I'm not going back because I am not trained to be an exorcist. I am not trained to cast out demons. That's your job, but do what you got to do. And yes, the psychological evaluations are needed before an exorcist or someone that can cast out a demonic spirit can actually go in because there's there's always the infamous case of Annalise Mikiel, better known as Emily Rose. And uh, anyone that ever saw the movie or read the book will tell you um, that the priests that were involved in there, including the parents, actually faced prison time after Emily Rose, actually Annalise Mikhail, passed away uh, from the exorcisms that they were conducting on her. She died weighing 69 pounds. Just nice. so to wear. It, it was horrible. So, yes. Psychological evaluations are needed. In case that's one of the questions out there, I just answered it. <laughs> um, I would I would watch that because I I don't like those kind of movies. I'm you know me, Happy Mama D, right? I'm just, I don't mind watching Ghostbusters because it, it's I mean it's cute, but too intense. I can't do that because it makes me feel ill. So we I'm do fine. have a couple of questions. All right, one is from Larry. If you are trying to connect 
with your spirit guide or to meet a spirit guide? How can you tell if the spirit you've connected is a positive or negative entity? The only thing I can draw from is what I've learned biblically speaking and in one of the verses uh, it states, always test spirits. And by testing spirits, I mean you ask that spirit of one question. And I have had this face, you know, I've, I've had to face this situation many times before. Um, because I do believe I have spirit guides. Um, the way they communicate with me is usually through uh, little messages I may get here and there, little things that happen throughout the day. I've never actually heard it per se, uh, but I usually say, who is the true Christ? And if it all of a sudden just goes away, then that wasn't a good spirit. I do believe in spirit guides. Mm -hmm. I do believe that spirit guides are uh, usually ancestors of ours. I believe that my grandfather and my grandmother happen to be two of them. I don't know the others. I know there are others. Mm -hmm. um, but that is one way of testing them. Also, their intent is another way of testing it. If you, if you follow their instructions or you are listening to what they're telling you to do, if you're capable of hearing what they're saying, and everything you try out ends up going kaput, that is not a good spirit to have, especially guiding your life. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's a good thing Mr. Glenn has left the room because his spirit guide is, he's not a, um, he's a very interesting gentleman to say the least. Okay. <laughs> He likes to cause trouble, but in a good sense, he's a mischievous little fart. Uh, he's a Brit, what can I say? Um, okay, Amanda's question. Mm -hmm. Can negative entities mimic past family members to pretend to be your spirit guide? Who work together? Yes, they can. It's, it's uh, in fact, one of the many things that has happened to Bishop Long. It's happened to me. It's happened to John Fathis. It's happened to just about every single person that I know that has been, um, the, in a theological sense, involved in the paranormal field. <clears throat> they will mimic uh, past ancestors, uh, people that have recently passed away. They will mimic their voice, their appearance. But there's always flaws to the way they sound and the way they look. And that's something you need to watch out for. Okay. All right. I hope that one answers your question. Uh, Larry said thank you. Good answer. That was the first question. Amanda, I hope that helped with that question. Okay. I hope so too. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's get back. I'm really good. I'm really not like the most professional um interviewer I am just me we're having a conversation and I always lose yeah. track of my pages because I'm like writing this don't say that mama D you're doing just fine okay I prefer this over many other interviews because it's just you and I talking and there happen to be eavesdroppers yes. sitting in on our conversation <laughs> which are more than welcome I don't mind yeah I'm going to have the question <laughs> please you can either Call in, and the call in number is 631-353-4342. I want to ask for the show number at 70016. And if not, if you have a question, just pop it into the chat room like everybody's been doing so far, and we'll get into it. Um, one of the things that you said uh, when you used to go uh, <coughs> trespassing uh, when you were young and uh, that was once, by the way. That was even further than go. Um, you said you went to the 13th floor. Now, yes. if I'm correct, most hotels and, and um, office buildings have chosen, a lot of them, have chosen not to have a 13th floor. Except for this hotel. Except for this hotel. Why is this hotel different? Yes. This hotel is notoriously known for one of the very few, and still to this very day, that when you go into their elevator, because now they're real, they've reopened since then, and they're an operating hotel. 
Mm -hmm. you will find the number 13 as a button in the elevator. Okay. And um, although uh, many, 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 many moons ago, it was considered to be bad luck to put the number 13 for the 13th floor, but everybody knows there's a 13th floor. If you have 16 floors on a building, there has to be a 13th. Um, this floor is actually the presidential suite, if I'm not mistaken. So it takes up the whole floor. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not able to use the elevator at that time because all power was shut down in the building. So I had to actually travel 13 floors, 13 flights of stairs to get up there. And when I got up there, uh, I had to, you know, kind of bust the door open a little bit because it was not nailed shut, but they, you know, you could tell people had already gone in, the mm -hmm. homeless people had gone in there and stuff like that. I started conducting EVPs and took photographs. Believe it or not, I found nothing, got no evidence whatsoever, but I was really into getting my paranormal, if you want to call it career, on track. And I chose the most notoriously haunted location in all of South Florida, which happens to be the Biltmore Hotel. And for those of you that don't know the history of the Biltmore Hotel, the Biltmore Hotel started off as a, as a hotel. But during World War II, they closed their doors as a hotel and reopened as a hospital, makeshift <coughs> hospital, and also a staging ground for the dead um, during World War II. So those that died tragically during World War II Mm -hmm. uh, were laid out uh, in the in uh, the actual first floor uh, the, of the lobby, uh, so that family members could come and claim their debt. And uh, the thirteenth floor was believed to also be where they kept a refrigeration system going for the bodies that were beginning to decay. And that's why I went to the 13th floor. I felt creeped out already in the lobby, but when I started walking up those flights of stairs to the 13th floor, um, having all this history in my head, I was already creeping myself out. But I got no evidence of anything spiritual going on there, although I wish I had, but I have to admit I didn't. Okay. All right. Um, there's a question in the chat room by um, Jenny Davis. Uh, who, by the way, is, who, by the way, is the creator of this platform that we're on. Intuitalk.com is her baby. So thank you very much, Jenny. Um, Hi, Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny says, she says, it's, it's a long story. It's long, but story in advance. I, have, I had a friend who did a lot of paranormal investigating. He also knew and worked with John Zappas. He had a pretty bad experience with his last investigation and has not been the same since. Do you have any advice on what he can do to be himself again? It depends on the type of experience he had. Um, usually, you know, some people won't really know if, uh, if they're really cut out for the paranormal. Uh, your metal needs to be tested. Uh, I've met many, many people over the years that say, oh, I want to be a paranormal investigator. And I'm like, do you really? And uh, we go on in an investigation. Nothing really incredible happens. Maybe one or two EVPs are captured, but that's enough to rattle their cage. Um, I've had individuals that have been scratched, pushed, allegedly uh, pushed. I, I didn't witness it. Uh, scratches, yes, I've witnessed the scratching. I've been scratched, I've been pushed, I've been slapped, I've been knocked down, you name it. Uh, has it rattled my cage? Yeah, it shocks you at first, but you pick yourself up again and you go, okay, all right, uh, gonna take a break, get some air, and go back in if I have to. But I've never, the only time I've had to do that was actually for the case uh, that was featured on a haunting. Uh, but that was an attachment that was messing with me empathically, and I had to take a break. But the best recommendation uh, that I can give to Jenny's friend is if this individual um, is already 
had his cage rattled. Uh, depending on what happened, um, and, and I know Jenny, and I've known Jenny for many years, um, was he uh, attacked? Uh, did he hear, see something that uh, really, you know, scared him? And if that's the case, if it's something he heard or saw that really scared him, then maybe the paranormal is not for him. But if it was uh, uh, something else, something more intimate, something more along the lines of a demonic, something trying to take over its body, that's yet an even bigger test. Um, if he feels that he was almost taken over, then maybe, just maybe, this may not be the field for him. Because let me let me just uh, make this abundantly clear. The paranormal, and when it comes to the paranormal and uh, theology, are two totally different things. Yeah. When you delve into the paranormal, you're going into a home, you're going into a location, you don't know what's around that corner, you don't know what's lurking in the dark, you don't know if there's something demonic or something human. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you may come across something demonic and or a human spirit that is very belligerent, as it was in life, it will be in death, and it will take out whatever frustrations that they have out on you. Yeah. Here's the question. If you can't handle a person, a living individual, that is rude or in your face about anything, mm -hmm. how can you expect to handle that spiritually speaking? Yeah. And it will happen. It will happen. It's the equivalency of me telling you right now, tell you what, go play professional football, you're not going to get hit. Yeah. Okay, and I'm lying to you. Mm -hmm. if, if you believe me, there's something wrong with you. Mm -hmm. um, be aware and always be um, very vigilant of the fact that when you enter into the realm of the unknown, there's a reason why it's called the realm of the unknown. You don't know what's yeah. there. And you don't know what could attack you. If you can't take what may have attacked you, maybe this is not for you at all. Yeah. Well, just a little little correction. This is not your Jenny Davis. This is mine. This is Jenny Satori Davis. I don't oh. think when it was in, in your Facebook chat earlier. Um, but she said, Jenny goes on to say, it was a negative entity that everyone believes is still attached to this gentleman. He has had countless health issues since. Well, in, in a situation like that, has, has this individual sought out um, the counsel of clergy or uh, someone uh, of, uh, it could even be a shaman, it could be a Native American shaman, it could be uh, someone in, in, that's involved um, in spirituality, uh, a Buddhist. Uh, there's many ways of getting rid of uh, of mm -hmm. attachments depending on your faith. Yes. That's the question I would ask. I think Jenny's typing again. Yeah, okay. yeah. He has quit the field, but is in, but was in it for decades. Thanks for the suge suggestion, Rich. Um, Jenny, what I'll do is I'll make sure that you get connected with Rich off here on Facebook, and you can ask him any other questions that you didn't want to ask online. Um, we have a guest in the chat room. His name is Bud. I'm sorry, Bob Sanker. He says, Bob hey, Rich. That's, that's my brother from another mother right there. How you doing, Bob? Hey, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, got a picture. Oh, Bob put in a picture. Dean approves. Thanks. Yes, Dean approves. Yes, I'm Fanny. He's Dean from Supernatural. You never know, Bob. You watch out. If you're being too nice, I might just drag you into being a guest on my show. I'm very good at that. That's great. <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, Onyx has decided he wants up. Uh, this show used to have uh, video as well as audio, and mm -hmm. my dog always knew that um, he could come on camera, but now he's sort of pissy because he's <laughs> on camera as much, but he still wants to be in my arms. 
All right. Uh, if anybody has any questions, type them into the chat room. I'm um, going to say a quick shout out to everybody who is in the chat room. We have Amanda K, Bob, the brother from another mother, Four Winds, Jenny Satori Davis, Larry, and I'm not even going to do your last name because I always torture it, Tammy, and we've got about three guests uh, who have been, hey, that six hour guest has finally left. How rude. <laughs> I had a, Jenny, I had somebody in here six hours. They were waiting quietly for, for Rich and I to get on the air. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so, the Zenner test. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's, one, that's one of the tests that you do. Yeah. Yeah. The Zenner test is testing somebody's ability to see what's on the other side of the, the card. Okay. It's a it's a psychic test. It's a test their psychic ability and read your mind. Okay. So if somebody, if you go show 15 cards and 15 out of the 15 is like a total flop, does that mean that there is no possession or, and how would that it go? Is, okay. Well, the Zenner test usually has, it depends on, on uh, which ones you get. There's some that have 20 to 25 cards. Uh, this, client actually got 15 of 20 correct okay um, it is believed uh, within the church that uh, someone that is possessed and there are many different trains of thought some priests believe they can some priests believe they cannot because there was something sacred that a demon can actually read your mind so being that I've been formally trained for so many years this is one of the many tests that I have to Conduct. I've also conducted these tests with, with individuals that claim to be psychics and mediums. Um, uh, well, mediums not really because mediums usually see the dead, but psychics can usually read your mind or tell the future. Um, okay. But if there is some kind of demonic presence there, um, and this was one of five tests that I can only mention yes. before I cannot, um, that this individual passed, if you want to call it that. I call it a failure because they're, they proved that there was something there. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> this is where it becomes very dangerous for a demonologist because I've always used the example uh, of a chess board and a chess game. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to a demonologist, the demonologist will always be the pawn. Those are the ones that usually go forward first and get knocked down first. Yeah. And then usually the bishop <laughs> is called <laughs> by the pawn that's laying on the board going, Yo, bishop, I need you. And <laughs> bishop comes across and knocks out whoever needs to knock out. And um, it's a very dangerous line of work. Um, and, uh, yes, the Zena test is one of them. Uh, it's not the main test that's used, um, but let me also make this clear, crystal clear. Uh, don't wake up one day saying, I want to be a demonologist. Uh -huh. Don't say, you know what, I'm going to start reading books, and I'm, I'm going to be a demonologist. This is not a, 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 a career day type of choice, you know, where you see firemen and police officers and doctors and lawyers come to your classroom and they say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a police officer. And this is what I do for a living. And then you're inspired to grow up to be one of them. No, this is a calling. Yeah. And this is a calling that I denied for many, many years. And <laughs> wanted nothing to do with, seriously, because this was by far not my choice. If I had a choice, mm -hmm. let's say right now I'm wherever it is I'm supposed to be. Let's, yeah, I'm, let's say I'm in heaven and I'm about to be born. Mm -hmm. And an angel says, okay, you have a choice of being something. You get to be a demonologist. I'd be like, eh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> yeah. How about, just, how about, how about uh, you know, you let me be born into a rich family and uh, make sure that the last name is not Trump and we're good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll call it even Stevens. But no. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> this is a calling. I believe we're all destined to be something in life. 
And um, it's not something that I look forward to when I get that call. And thank God I have not had that call for, for quite some time to go check out a case to see if it's potentially demonic. Mm-hmm. I usually do a lot of this via phone. Um, and in fact, there, there happens to be someone uh, in the chat room, I know for a fact, that is uh, presently a client. I will not name this individual's name. Um, <clears throat> listening in, and I've been offering this individual advice uh, via PM on Facebook. And I always keep their identity um, private because it's a very private subject matter. It's not something to go on. You know, telling everyone, hey, by the way, everyone. Yeah, I'm done with the No, this is where the person says, no, if they want to, then they can, you know, yeah, this is this is what I'm doing. This, Yeah, so, yeah, I get it. Right. Um, understandable. You can send any of your clients over to me if they want to get on my on the air. I'm open. <laughs> All they got to do is say, Rich sent me to say, and I'd be like, yes, <laughs> the answer is yes. <laughs> Um, okay, Larry in the chat room has a question for you. Rich, you mentioned earlier that demons can impersonate deceased family members. Question yeah. is, is there a way to know if the medium who is reading you is actually hearing from your actual relative, or could it be the imposter? Mm. Well, here's the thing. Um, my question to that person would be, <clears throat> how many mediums, how many psychics, do you uh, communicate with? Because this can also become a very obsessive thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I happen to know of many uh, psychic mediums that are both, that will only do three to four readings for a person and then they cut them off. And there's a reason for that because it can become a very, very addictive thing. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. When, <clears throat> when you have an individual that is constantly, like once a week, let's say, or twice a week, uh, turning to the same psychic medium, uh, asking for advice, or having their cards read, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, You're not living life. You're hanging off of everything that this psychic medium is telling you. Um, you're, You're sitting around waiting for Mr. or Mrs. Wright to come along, or that new job opportunity, or that new home, or that new car, or this new person you're going to meet, and you're not living life. Yeah. I remember I, I caught myself years ago because the psychic medium I work with, Angel, uh, is very, very good at what he does. His name is Angel Murphy. He's part of my team, and um, he does card readings. He's a Reiki master. He's a medium. He's a psychic. You name it, this guy is the whole kit and caboodle. And I found myself turning to him almost every three weeks, asking him to read my cards. Mm-hmm. And after three months of doing this, I said, you know what? I don't want to know my future anymore. I'm sick and tired of this garbage. I, whatever happens, happens. And I want to be the one that steers my ship to where I want it to go. Um, can a psychic medium was the question um, – how can they tell whether this is yeah, a so family member coming through or not? Yeah. Yes, they should be able to tell. Okay. They should. Okay. Because usually what will happen is if it's not something human, they will get a nauseous feeling. They will get a bad feeling, shivers up and down their spine, and that's usually a very strong indicator that this is not kosher. Okay. Okay. Um, just by the FYI, you should let Angel know that uh, I will be friending him <laughs> and, <laughs> and John Davis and Bishop Long. <laughs> Very good people to friend. And then good luck on that because I know that their friends list is, is hot, to say the least. But they do, they do have fan pages. And, and Bob has already said that he's willing to come on my show, so I'm guessing that's a... I'm going to get some, some good dish on his brother from another mother, too. <laughs> yes. Bob is, is actually a, a very dear friend of mine. I've known him for over 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, he's a very good paranormal investigator, in my opinion. 
Uh, he's a no-nonsense kind of guy. Uh, love him to death. Uh, one of the very few people that I would actually take a bullet for. Oh, Bob, I hope the check's in the mail. <laughs> I know you wouldn't take a bullet for me. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amanda, Amanda in the chat room says, but mediums can be wrong, right? Yes, yes, they can. I I think, well, there's no pictures that I want in my chat room. Thank you. A man pointing two guns at me. It's okay. He's a cute one, so I'll let it stay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that... Uh, I like the way you think that you said that you chose to stop asking Angel to read your cards because you wanted to be, let's say, the captain of your own ship. But I think a lot of people out there do rely too heavily on uh, what somebody else tells them. But there's, then, there, then you have the, the great people who come to you and say, I want a reading, I want you to draw my cards, I want you to do whatever it is, you know, do the voodoo that you do so well. And then they they take it and they just you know they don't listen to what what messages were passed on what what advice was given whatever the case may be so I like the idea that you you've listened but then you chose to listen to the part of you that says it's time for me to do my own thing exactly so that's one of the things well, what, what, how how fun would life be Mama D if you already knew what was going to happen. Oh, I know it's going to happen. It's gonna, I'm going to get everything that I want. I'm not well, sure exactly. it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. Because <laughs> you're the captain of your own ship. But, you know, if, if it's the equivalency of saying, you know what, uh, I'm going to go see this movie, but I want to know everything that happens in it, and I want to know the ending. Why bother going to pay a ticket to go see the movie when you already knew what's going to happen and how it's going to end? Uh, that's that's the way I see it. I'm I'm all about analogies. I apologize in advance. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and no, that's the way I started perceiving it. Okay. Um, Amanda in chat room says, can an ent entity manipulate a medium to say that an entity is in your life, in your life is family? Hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't think so much like the way I answered the, the answer I gave before. Uh, they would feel ill. They would feel there's something off with the, this message. And if it's being influenced by a darker entity, uh, I would wager to say that if this medium is truly a medium, because you have to test the mediums. Uh, I, I've always, <laughs> I've always laughed. <clears throat> okay, I'll, I'll use this as an example. There was this one medium. I'm not going to drop any names because I never do unless I know the individual and they know I'm talking about them and they know that I'm not talking anything bad. But I, I seriously questioned this medium's ability to read me because, well, I don't know. A, they were friends on Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> B, um, we had already spoken many times on the phone, and C, uh, they weren't telling me anything that I already didn't know and they already didn't know. I would strongly urge, uh, much like what I did many years ago in 1998, is if you come in contact with a medium, give them a fake name, uh, test them. And if they come up with, that's not really your name. Your name is starts with, uh, let's say, let's use my name, R, and ends with a V. I keep getting a Rick, a Rich, Richard, or a, a Vasquez, Valdez, something like that. You know that this person is the real deal. Okay. Make sure you're not friends on Facebook with this person. I have worked with so many mediums and so many psychics. And I have tested them time and time and time again. And I find there to be very, very few authentic ones out there. There are many pretenders, many wannabes that want to be. But when you have to be very careful if you want to be recognized as a psychic or a medium, because one day you will be tested. 
And if you're caught with your pants or dress down, it's going to look bad. And you will, you will be made an example of, not by me, but mm-hmm. by other people that have no fear whatsoever or depredations of actually exposing you for the fake that you are. So be very, very careful with whom you seek guidance from. Okay. Well, that's one of the reasons why, um, one of the reasons why I do my show is so that people get to know a little bit about who they're talking to. So if I see somebody that gets into my bubble three times and, and there's a reason that you're in my bubble and I think that this person is the real deal and I think other people may sh- should know about this person. You know, like for me, I'm, I, I do not like to get readings from people that know me because then, like you say, they've seen that maybe they've seen it on Facebook or maybe, you know, They've seen it in, in my, the crazy stuff that I post. So I don't, I don't ask people for readings. Um, when I started this show, people was like, well, do you get readings from your guests? No, because that's not what I'm asking them about. I'm not asking them to be on my show so I can get a free reading, free whatever. It's because I want, I want everybody to know who Rich is. You know, that he's not just this, this man who pops up on, on my timeline in, in Facebook live videos and gives this sage advice. But there is a lot behind him. Everything that he says comes with great information. So if people have questions about demons or they think that they're, you know, connected, that there's something going on in their house and they're not in the town that you live in, they can say, look, I've got this problem going on. Can you suggest somebody? You know, so that it's 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 getting to know people, but uh, you know, and, I'm, and 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 thank you for your vote of confidence. I appreciate it, and and I'm honored. Uh, and there's so much more to me than just uh, being a demonologist or a paranormal investigator. Uh, uh, but, you know, to girls, that's it. Oh, I, I, I have I have many, many hats and many responsibilities in this life, and I take them all very, very seriously, although I've uh, placed uh, Greetings from Beyond Radio on hiatus for the time being because there's just so much going on with Wayward mm-hmm. Souls promotions and events that we have coming up that, um, you know, some things take precedence over others, and that's why I've had to place it on hiatus. But I will pick up the baton, or should I say the microphone again, and uh, start my show when the time's right. And I think the universe will be the one that will say, hey, Rich, time to pick up the microphone, and that's when you'll see my show back on the air again. Okay. Well, you cannot see the chat room, but one of the things that I, I have been posting throughout the show um your I didn't did I do that right? No, I didn't. I didn't um uh, your link for your um Waver Soul Productions Facebook and the face and the um website and mm-hmm. also the Paranormal Consulting Agency. I don't know why I keep tripping over that one. The website and the Facebook page. But I've also just posted the two lovely posters that you have for the Asylum forty nine. So if people who don't get to see it, I'm going to make sure that it's on my Facebook page, part of the show page. Um, Asylum 49 happens on March 23rd, 2019. Get your tickets, there's 65 bucks, and there's Tina Paré-Duchene. I will put a French accent to that one. And this other gentleman, Rich Valdez, who will be part of that. And then there's another one, Hell's Bar Dam, which I've heard that name recently quite often, February 23rd, 2019, in Guild, Tennessee, and those tickets are $70 each. Get your butts over there. Oh, this is one thing I like, is the percentage, a uh, percentage of the ticket sales and the seat sales go to Bishop Long's Homeless Ministry and Single Mother's Ministry. So, very, very good. Yes. Uh, that's That's one thing that Jen and I um agreed to to do 
uh, when it came to starting Wayward Souls promotions. In fact, the first event was this past February uh, at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital in Tennessee, and uh, proceeds from food sales and ticket sales all went to Bishop Long's Homeless and Single Moms Ministry, and it's something that we look to do at every event that we do hold. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being Hales Bar Dam for next year uh, in Tennessee. Um, Bishop Long will be there. Um, hopefully I get the, the Paranormal Clergy shirts uh, soon so that uh, people can get autographed T-shirts and proceeds from those sales, uh, actually all proceeds from the sales from those T-shirts will go to his homeless ministry as well. Uh, we will also have David and Jamie Childers mm -hmm. and Greg Backen uh, as well uh, investigating with us as guest investigators. And, and our, our, our whole uh, reason for, for having these events uh, is not just to um, help, um, you know, the, the, the ministry. It's also to bring people together. Uh, one of the things and one of the main staple things that, that we started uh, this year in Old South Pittsburgh Hospital was every person that was there, uh, they were made to feel at home. They were made to feel like they were part of something greater, some part of a family. Mm -hmm. um, and these individuals, a lot of the individuals that made it to that event will be coming to the 2019 Hales Bar event as well as the Asylum 49 lockdown event because they they loved feeling like they were they they weren't looked down upon. Mm -hmm. They were part of everyone there was equal. We made sure that that was the vibration that Jen and I put out there, and it was felt by everyone. And that's what we always uh, pursue to to actually get across the message that we want people to come away with. The feeling we want people to come away with is that um, they were felt welcome, uh, that they want to come back for more. We always fight to keep the, the ticket prices down. Uh, I I challenge anyone out there to have not one, not two, but but three or four, uh, what I refer to as guest investigators, there are many people out there that call them paranormal celebrities, to where you can investigate for one night for $70 at Hales Bar Dam. And let me tell you something. While you've spent that money, $70, portions of ticket sales and portions from Food sales, which will be provided by the Maste Cafe, will be going to a worthy cause. And the same thing for Asylum 49. And this is what I look forward to, is making everyone know that, hey, you know what? While you're having fun doing what you love to do, you're also giving to an even better cause. And that's helping people that are not able to lift themselves up and need that help. And that's why we chose to actually take on Bishop Long's uh, homeless ministry and single moms ministry, and this also does help battered women as well uh, to get their feet back underneath them, and it's for a good cause. So why not participate and have fun at the same time and know that you're giving back? That's what this is all about. It is, and this is what a lot of people forget nowadays, is that it, it takes something just so little to give back. Um, I'm not sure Namaste Cafe was exactly what they sell, but I'm sure that even if you bought a, a tea, it, it, that little bit helps. No matter what you do, you know, some people sit there, well, it's only $5 or it's only 2 That little $5, $2 may just be what it needs to push something over the top. So never... Well, never Namaste, oh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt. Namaste Cafe uh, just dropped on our laps two months ago. Um, I, I know uh, both individuals very well, and I'm very close to uh, Jill Skates. Uh, she is a professional chef, a private chef, uh, has been cooking for many, 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 many years, and her and Valerie decided to start Namaste Cafe, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a catering company so uh we're not talking about you know uh hot dogs and hamburgers no 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 no. we're talking about 
uh, pastries, <laughs> we're talking about meals, percentages mm. from all sales, and plus tips will be going to a worthy cause. So uh, I love the fact that, you know, uh, Joe also happens to be a very well-known psychic medium, and she'll have her opportunity to investigate Hales Bar Dam as well. Uh, once, you know, they've closed down shop, they'll be joining us later on in the evening, and why not? So it's all for a good cause. Uh, just to give a little plug for Namaste Cafe, they, they have excellent food. I've had it before. I can't complain. Their quiches are amazing. They just melt in your mouth, not in your hands. This is not M&M. <laughs> <laughs> These are quiches, and I'm telling you right now, they are so good. Okay. Uh, first off, a uh, little message. Uh, <clears throat> Bob's rather upset in the chat room. He's, hey, hey, what's wrong with hot dogs? I <laughs> the film. Okay, okay. There's there's a story behind that. There's a story oh, behind that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna expose that story, and it's it's funny. Okay. Um, Old South Pittsburgh Hospital event that Wayward Souls Promotions um, hosted this year in February. Uh, thanks to Bob and Tina, uh, they assisted and helped us out because, of course, Jen and myself, we were very very busy. We had a sellout crowd at Old South Pittsburgh Hospital, and we had to make sure that all the crowds were going to where they had to go. But we wanted everyone to get fed before they went off to investigate. Uh, mind you, uh, Bob jumped in, and and thank God for that, because he started cooking all the hot dogs, and he was dubbed uh, and given the nickname by Mr. Jay Lynch from oh. Fit Laugh. Uh, sit, chat, and laugh with the Lynches, Mr. J. Lynch and Teresa Lynch, which we love very much, part of our family on the, in Wayward Souls Promotions. Uh, he, was, he, was given, he was given the name Wiener Man. Because <laughs> he cooked the wieners very well, and everyone was very happy with the hot dogs. But unfortunately, he's been shelved for this one particular uh, mm. event happening in Hills Bar Dam. I apologize, Bob, but yeah, you get to investigate instead. And you can, you can go ahead and buy your food from the Mosty Cafe and know that it's going to be excellent food and it's going to a worthy cause. So it all works out in the end. I'm, I'm sure they'll book you for another meal, Bob. Uh, yes, Jay is very good with his nicknames, uh, and you have to be very careful what you say about around Jay, because I have um, I have a saying where uh, people go, "Oh, Mama D, you're so you're always so happy," and I was like, "Yeah, I do. My unicorns do fart butterflies and rainbows, but there is still that smell." So uh, Jay's <laughs> I was like, oh, "Okay, fine." I. He is, he's, he's Jay. Nobody can out. This is the man that is bringing overalls back to sexy. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, the whole show just to hear that one. <laughs> well, Jay, you know, Jay and, and, and uh, Teresa, I met them years ago back in Mid-South, I'd say 2012. Uh, after Bishop Long had given one of his uh, Demonology 101 presentations, and uh, we had the pleasure of meeting them for the first time there. And then uh, we reconnected uh, because of Wayward Souls promotions. They showed up, and we had a blast. Uh, Jay and Teresa are one of the very few down-to-earth individuals that you feel right at home with them. Mm -hmm. uh, they try to keep everything light, and God bless them both because uh, they are one of the very few out there that they don't uh, – they're not fake. They they do what they do, and uh, they do it with, with uh, dignity. Uh, there are times that they do – I should say more Jay than Teresa, uh, yeah. shamefully will <laughs> do things uh, just to get a laugh out of people. But, you know, uh, breaking away from, from such serious subject matters as demons and wieners and oh my, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I love the fact that, I, I, and thank you again for having me on your show, um, I love what, what you bring to the air uh, because 
there should be more shows like yours. There's uh, a very dear friend of mine that your show reminds me very much of. Her name is Cindy Plume, uh, has been a dear friend of mine uh, for well over 10 years now. And uh, she is um, – uh, she had a show. I don't know if she still has it on the air called Keeping It Real with Cindy. And oftentimes, uh, she'd talk about the paranormal or she'd have psychic mediums on. And, uh, uh, I love the feel of your show. I love the energy and the message you're sending across. And when you asked me to be on your show, I was honored, uh, because I know the message that you're bringing across is a positive one and one that needs to be out there very much like when I take the time to do my live feeds, I make sure that whoever pops in as I'm doing the live feed and later on pops in to watch what I had to say because they couldn't make it at the time that it was happening live, that they walk away with something positive. Um, but yes, there have been times I've ranted, but I've never dropped names. Uh, but I try to keep it light. I try to keep it positive. And that's a word also. I can't believe I just used it twice. Try. It's something that I've tried to remove. See, I used it a third time. <laughs> that I have removed from my vocabulary because try four times right there, but I had to indicate it, indicates that you are trying. There could be success or there mm -hmm. could be failure. <laughs> so by removing the word T-R-Y from your vocabulary and simply putting in its place do, is something that we all need to start practicing because when you try something, you're leaving room for failure. And I'm one of those people that I refuse to fail at what I do. And if that means bringing a good message across or helping people, which I often do, or doing wayward souls or uh, paranormal consulting agency or being on your show, I try to make sure that I bring with me something positive, a ray of hope, so that people are not walking away empty-handed. So thank you so much for having me on your show. I'm very appreciative of it. Well, I'm honored that you uh, said yes. And Jenny Satori Davis, Jenny in the chat room says that, yes, Cindy Plume is still on. Um, and And... Bob was was sweet enough to put <laughs> a picture of him and Jay aw into my chat room. <laughs> I'm about to save all these pictures. You do realize that, Bob? I'm going to hold this as blackmail for something or another. Uh, oh, Bob! Especially with the tell Bob movie. to put up. Tell Bob to put up the eye of the tiger picture of him and I together about what two years ago, I believe, at Bellsmere. Oh, and uh, oh yeah. The original self messing around at all self possible. Oh Lord, the wheelchair race. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you see, I'm not psychic, but I know pretty much what he's talking about there. Mm -hmm. And wait a minute, this is the first picture I've seen you without a hat on. <laughs> you got a shoe ball going on there. <laughs> uh, one thing about Bob is that he tries to keep everything light. Uh, he's a very positive individual, and I've always encouraged people to, um, you know, listen to his shows. He he he's brought back um, his uh, his show called Paranormal Wagering. He's still working on a few things here and there, but uh, hopefully he'll be able to bring that back. Okay, hey, Bob, you let me know when when that one uh, comes up, and we'll have it with friends on Facebook. Uh, but there's something about this picture that I know I notice as something. The um, paranormal kicks cancer, I think. Mm -hmm. That's what I, said. Uh, I know those people well. They've also been on my show. Uh, ah, losing to these uh, I have to remind you of something I saw in the chat earlier. Um, do, 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 do. Amanda is bringing lots of money to go buy lots of food for the for, uh, to do, make sure it gets donated to the bishop. But she also said, "Don't forget, you're supposed." She's looking forward to meeting the bishop. <laughs> Don't forget now, Rich. 
Because, yes, you, I'm guessing, I'm assuming, if you can ask that of you and Nick, that you said that you would introduce her to the bishop. So, I should get that done. <laughs> and uh, remind me again who this is. Amanda, and I'm thinking, a.k.a. Angel K. Okay. Amanda K. Uh, I will definitely do that. Uh, if I, I really hope they can also make one of the, the well, at least the event at, at um, uh, Hales Bar Dan, because he will be there. I think that's um, what it would be. And, 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 you know, the one thing I, I love about Bishop Long, um, he never hesitates to, to bless you. He never hesitates to bless any item you may bring to him, be it a cross, be it a St. Michael medal that you own or a St. Benedict's medal, uh, oh, she'll bless it for you for free. She's got her tickets already. Oh, oh great. So I get to meet Amanda. That's great. Okay. Amanda, are you, are you the angel I know on Facebook? I'm pretty sure. And, I'm, and if it is, I'm pretty sure that you know her too. Probably a lot better than I do. <laughs> uh huh. I guess we'll get the answer. Oh no, she's not. Okay. Right. Last name is the same, so that's why I called you Angel before. But okay, you will get to meet, you will get to meet Amanda. Mhm. Mm okay. Um. All right. Let's see where those questions go. Do, 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 do. Old Catholic Church. Please explain that. I was, I was, uh, oops, turn the TV down. Um, if on, I was raised in the Catholic religion. I was, like I said, I went through all the sacraments. Um, and they used to have, have poke me to wake me up when I was zoning away into the angels uh, during mass. So please explain to me, you you are, we'll say, sanctioned by the old Catholic Church. What exactly is the old, or who exactly is the old Catholic Church? And I think the, the United States Old Catholic Church uh, basically uh, splintered off from the Roman Catholic Church due to the fact that they, this was back in, I believe, the 1700s. Okay. Because they, <coughs> excuse me, they didn't believe that uh, the Pope was infallible. The Roman Catholic Church believes the Pope is infallible. The United States Old Catholic Church believes that the Pope is just like anybody else is a human being, and they're they're you know prone to error. Yeah. That being said, um, that's the only separation between the churches. So it's it's like saying Roman Catholic Church, United States Old Catholic Church, Protestant, Baptist, uh, they're all recognized as actual churches. Uh, but and in religious bodies, but there's differences of opinions. Yeah, agreed. Like I said, I was raised. Uh, I guess it's Roman Catholic, um, and and I I, I questioned a lot, and uh, so if I go into a Catholic church, it's going to come falling down. That or I'll be having a lot of conversations with the angels at once. <laughs> Right, right. And, 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 you know, oftentimes, you know, I, I've always said it, it, I myself, uh, being recognized by the United States Old Catholic Church, does not mean that I am a, a Catholic. I'm actually a non-denominational Christian. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a non-denominational Christian, but we all have the same belief that, uh, at least personally speaking for myself, I can't speak for everyone else, but we all have the personal underlying belief, and that being that Jesus is the Christ. I have accepted Jesus as my uh, personal Savior. But with that being said, uh, that doesn't diminish my faith to be any less of a Baptist or a Protestant or a Catholic of any, of any sort or any way, shape, or form. It just simply means that we have different points of view when it comes to the religious order and how it actually works out. Mm -hmm. When you are actually sitting in a pew or a chair in a church, that's the only difference. Exactly. I, I keep saying that we don't have to all believe the same thing, but we basically all do believe the same thing because we all believe that there is a higher power. Just what yeah. you call him or her 
it's your choice. It's a personal choice. And I'll, mm-hmm. and, and, uh, I had somebody ask me a while back, um, do I do prayers? And I go, well, to me, a prayer is a conversation. So I have a conversation with my higher power. And somebody will say that's praying to God. It's like, that's what you call it. I have it. I consider it a conversation with she who rules the roost. <laughs> when it's a he, it's old man with you pouring a bunch of snow on my head. <laughs> you know, a prayer to me is an intent. It's, mm-hmm. it's an energy that you're sending out. Um, I, for There's so many so many different uh, shows and documentaries that I've seen over the years. One that really sticks out is Life After Life. I don't know if anyone's ever heard of that documentary. If you have not, you can find it on YouTube. And it's about people that have had near-death experiences. And I will never forget, every single person had different experiences. Mm -hmm. Some went to heaven, some went to hell, some went to a very dark place, some went nowhere. And some stuck around, and they actually saw their dead, lifeless body, and, and they, they communicated with other past uh, ancestors that have passed on into the afterlife. And, you know, I believe, and, and over the years, and this is what I mean when I say I'm eclectic, um, and I give all religions um, their, their shot, because if that's what you believe in and that's what makes you feel good, go mm-hmm. for it. Uh, but let me just say this. We're all the same. We're all energy. Uh, be it spirit, be it soul. I believe we're three. The best way I can describe my faith is that when the Trinity is spoken of, there's God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Well, I believe we're three. Mm-hmm. We're created in the image of God. And I'm sorry, I don't need to be jumping on a soapbox here. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> in Corinthians, I believe Second Corinthians, um, when... Uh, I believe it was either Paul or John that wrote to the Corinthians. I think it was John. He said, and I bless you, body, spirit, soul. Notice he says body, which is the vessel, spirit, which is the vessel to the soul, and the soul. He named three. We're created in the image of God, which happens to be three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So that being said, that's my belief. It doesn't have to be everybody else's, but I respect everybody else's choice to believe whatever they choose to believe. You want to worship a rock, you want to worship uh, a goddess, you want to worship um, nature, you want to worship whatever. If it works for you, then blessed be, God bless, or higher power bless you, or, and as I always say, and you know this very well, Mama D, peace be still. I put the link into the chat room for the Life After Life uh, documentary film, so everybody can. It's an awesome documentary. It really is. Well, I will definitely be checking that out. Maybe not yes. tonight. <laughs> no, uh, leave that for for some other night when you really have time for it. And let me tell you, it it will change your life. It changed my life, that's for sure. It mm-hmm. made me start looking at the afterlife in a different way, because these are people that survived death. That yeah. is dead, and and came back, and and they, their life had completely changed. The way they approached things had completely changed. So it's a it's a very very um, life changing documentary, one that I strongly recommend that people take up. Okay. Okay. Just for anybody who's interested, I just posted that link on my Facebook page. So if you don't get it in the chat room, you can get it there. Uh, Larry in the chat room says, Rich, you might remember that it says in Genesis, let us make man in our image. Yes. Yes. Notice and the key word being our. Mm-hmm. It never says in my. It says our. So meaning there's more than one. So, you know, that actually opens up a lot of debate. Is there more than one God? Is there just one? Or is there three in one? Um, that is open to interpretation. It's kind of like saying, uh, when I'm on a show, I'm a certain way. When I am with my family, I'm a certain way. When I'm with friends, I'm a different way. Mm -hmm. You're still the same person. I'm still rich, but uh, my demeanor will change for a show just as much as it will change 
as when I'm around family, just as much as it will change when I'm around friends. And that is, I guess, the best analogy I can use for when what this individual just quoted, our image. Yeah. And that in itself is an identity. You can say, oh, well, then God has an identity crisis. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I think, if anything, uh, this is the, and this is also something else that's going to be very controversial, and I'm going to call it out. But one of the books that I'm reading is a book that has the 200 books that were removed from the Bible. Mm-hmm. Did you know that there was? Yes, there was. The, there was a book uh, called. There's uh, the book Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. There's uh, the book Eden. Uh, there's the book of Enoch. There's uh, the book of uh, Mary of Magdalene. There's the book of the Virgin Mary. There's so many books. There's the book of Judas. Did anyone know this? And, and I study these books because I'm I, inquiring mind that I have needs to satisfy the unknown. This is why I'm in the paranormal, and this is why I study theology. This is why my calling has been to be someone that will help people that may have demonic issues going on, and just so that I set the record straight, if any one of your listeners ever come across a demonologist that say, I can come in there and get rid of that demon, do not, under any circumstances, invite this person over. A demonologist, a true demonologist, is not trained to cast out demons. A demonologist is simply an individual that has studied demonology, they are supposed to be under the order of their church and their bishop or the priest to go in, investigate, and test, write a report, send it back to the bishop, send it back to the priest, have them decide whether this is demonic or not based off of your opinion as to what you experienced and what you witnessed and then they take it to the next level, which is a psychological evaluation. Once this individual passes or fails a psychological evaluation, then they move in or they don't. And that is how a demonologist works. So any one of you listeners right now listening, I am not authorized by the church nor trained by the church formally to cast out demons. That is clergy. Clergy is the one that takes care of that. Exactly. And FYI. Yes. Okay. Uh, Larry in the chat room, when you were talking about the book, he says, yes, the, I'm probably going to torture this name, but Amanda said, everybody will say this word differently. Ap Rock Rafa. (laughs) Okay. Okay. A P P R O C K R A P H A. And he wasn't on the spelling. So, and I'm guessing that fits the, the, the name of the book where all the other books are. So yes. it's, it's really, okay, well, we are at 8.30, and I'm sure we can go on longer, but my tummy's growling, so I gotta go eat. <laughs> um, but uh, I definitely would love to have you back anytime you want. Um, and I'm, I'll be your guest anytime you need me back. By all means, I'll be happy to be back on your show. It's been an honor and a pleasure to be on your show and to talk to your your listeners and to talk to you as well. Well, I thank you for being here. And thank you for Amanda K., Bob, Forwin, Jenny, Kathleen, Davis, uh, Larry, Tammy, and the four guests that are in there. Thank you all for being here. Um, I hope to see you next week, I believe. And, of course, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but I believe that my guest next week is LJ, the medium, I believe. I think you know me. I'll put up a post for it. <laughs> y'all be good. Y'all behave yourself. Thank you very, very much for this evening and your time. And any time that you have anything to share, Post it on my page and I will share the who who has it because you know me, I'm a shareaholic. Night, everybody. Y'all behave yourselves now. Boop, 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 boop.
please speak to